Uh, my name is Frank Vagané, and I'm the artistic director of Brussels Jazz Orchestra. And I would like to welcome you to our live streaming sessions. Unfortunately, we have no stage performances until at least the end of August, but we want to stay in the hearts and minds of our fans. And therefore, we are developing some virtual uh, alternatives. Through a series of live streaming sessions, I will take you into the wonderful world of jazz arranging. Um, I'll take you through the arranging process uh, from a blank sheet of paper to the final performance on stage and I'll provide you with practical information. Some uh, topics of this journey will be more technical, uh, but I'm sure that there will be enough to take away for uh, everyone. Um, I'm going to make a, an arrangement based on a song that will be a part of a, a brand new concert program that BJO is developing and will premiere next uh, season. This song is written by using the, the well-known AABA song form and has 32 bars. The lyrics exist of four verses, so it means four times AABA. And the song duration, duration of, of the original song is around three minutes and a half. I initially had the idea to show you the original YouTube video, but due to copyright regulations, we are not allowed to use that video clip. That's why I asked the exceptional, great, talented vocalist uh, Naima Yoris to record this uh, first verse of this song in its original tempo and harmony. Je suis venu te dire que je m'en vais. Je suis venu te dire que je m'en vais. Tes larmes n'y pourront rien changer Comme dit si bien vers l'aile au vent mauvais Je suis venu te dire que je m'en vais Tu te souviens des jours anciens et tu pleures Tu suffoques, tu blémis un présent qu'à sonner l'heure des adieux à jamais je suis au regret de te dire que je m'en vais je t'aimais oui mais je suis venu te dire que je m'en vais tes sanglots longs n'y pourront rien changer Comme dit si bien Verlaine au vent mauvais Je suis venu te dire que je m'en vais Tu te souviens des jours seraux et tu pleures Tu 
suffoque, tu gémis à présent, qu'à sonner l'heure. Des adieux à jamais, je suis au regret de te dire que je m'en vais, car tu m'en as trop fait. This is a version, and as you could hear, she's loaded with talent. So uh, I invite you, everyone, to check out Naima through her Facebook page. So if you have any questions, please, I'll check my chat box. No problem. I will try to answer. I will ask this a few times um, through the streaming session. Okay, so the arrangement. So in fact, what is an arrangement, in fact? So um, an arrangement is an adaptation of an existing piece of music written for another orchestral setup or written in a different style. It is like you are renovating your house and you keep the basic fundaments and that's the original composition. Um, but you're installing a new kitchen and you could see that kitchen as the use of other musical instruments. And maybe you're just constructing a new bedroom and that bedroom could be the ex extra composed material. So at the end, it's the same house, but it's completely different. The same song, but in a new jacket. Arranging is the art of giving an existing melody musical variety. A perfect example uh, of this are the arrangements written for our project uh, Brel. And here's an uh, extract of our version of Nemekita Pa, arranged by our piano player Nathalie Laurier and sung by David Lynx uh, during our CD release concert at Flage in Brussels in 2016. And you will recognize, recognize the melody from the original version, but it's based on new harmonic and melodic material. Ne me quitte pas. Ne me quitte pas. Je t'inventerai des mots insensés que tu comprendras Je te parlerai de ces amants-là Qui ont vu deux fois leur cœur s'embraser Je te raconterai l'histoire de ce roi mort De n'avoir pas pu te rencontrer Ne me quitte pas On a vu souvent vous jaillir le feu de l'ancien volcan qu'on croyait trop vieux. Il est paraît-il de te brûler d'un an en plus de blé qu'un meilleur avril. Et quand vient le soir pour passer l'endroit, le rouge et le noir ne s'épouse-t-il pas? Ne me quitte pas, ne me quitte pas. Ne in jazz music, the first arrangements were not written down on paper, but played from memory and often learned by ear. The so-called head arrangements. Uh, jazz orchestras, they grew from quintets or sextets to orchestras as existing of 13, 14 or even more uh, musicians. And first they used the call and response procedures so like, like uh, the trumpets, they, they play a melody as a call and the trombones are responding uh, as, as a, as a res response. So um, it's in between the sections. But that evolved into more sophisticated arrangements who were written down on paper. And until today, the art of arranging evolves further under the influences of all kinds of contemporary music, um, like jazz, like classical music, pop, folk, uh, world music, and so on. So first, I would like to add some general considerations when you start writing an arrangement. So first, what kind of or orchestral instrumentation should you write for? I mean, uh, is it a classical orchestra or is it a sh chamber orchestra or a Latin band or in my case, a big band? So the big band 
um, I suppose to write for has a 5444 setup. So that means five woodwinds, mainly saxophones, but they also play flutes and clarinets and, and bass clarinet. Um, there is this trombone section existing of three, um, three uh, tenor trombones and one bass trombone. We have a trumpet section of four. They also play uh, flugelhorn. And there is the rhythm section involving a piano, a double bass, a guitar, and uh, drums. And in this particular uh, case, I have to add uh, the vocalists as the main featured part in my arrangement. I have to look also uh, about what kind of atmosphere and colors do I want to evoke. I mean, uh, am I going to use woodwinds? Am I going to use flutes or clarinets? Um, am I going to use mutes uh, to have different colors? Mutes for the trombones, mutes for the trumpets, all kinds of mutes, uh, uh, cup mutes, velvet mutes, straight mutes, plungers, harmon mutes. Uh, even this, this traditional hat, you know, that they uh, bring in front of the bell. So that's things to think about. Um, and then who is being featured in the arrangement? Of course, in this case, the vocalist, she will, she will sing uh, melodies. She will sing the, the hat melody text, but she will also sing a solo and, and probably vocalizing uh, together with, with uh, instruments in the, in, the, in the big band. And, uh, and there's also uh, an extra instrumental soloist to, you know, I have to, make, I have to make sure that there is space in the arrangement to give uh, a certain person, a musician in the band, some time to, to uh, play an improvised solo. Um, another thing is that we have to take in, in um, account is the, the duration of your arrangement. Sometimes they ask you to write an arrangement of, of three minutes or four, or maybe sometimes you have some more liberty. And uh, so we go up to nine minutes, maybe. Um, another consideration is, is uh, the choice of groove and style that you want to uh, arrange. Um, I mean, this, this, this melody uh, has this straightforward, um, even feel. And uh, do I want to go with that? Do I want to stay with that? Or do I change it into even? swing uh, feel or, or uh, a bossa, bossa nova feel or a Latin feel, or maybe uh, I change it completely into a slow ballad. So, so oh, oh, these are all options that you have to think about when you start um, yeah, thinking about, about the arrangement. In my case, this, this particular case, uh, I'm going to try to keep it in a straight, in a straight feel uh, uh, based on a slightly slower tempo than the original. I think it's going to be more practical to keep the uh, transparency uh, through, throughout the, the whole arrangement. Um, then you have to look also for uh, the right tonality. I mean, it's not that, that the tonality of the piece itself, the original piece, the, uh, is, is, for instance, in this case, a major that it fits also for the featured vocalist uh, who's going to sing with the big band. So, so uh, I have to look together with the, with the vocalist about uh, the, the, the best tonality because she has a vocal range. She has uh, the colors, uh, the, the best colors in the range of her voice. Uh, when, uh, where can she, she sing uh, loud? And, sounded best or where where can she sing soft and 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 try to keep to be as at her best uh, at that uh, level so in this case um i decided to, to to not staying in a major because it was quite all right for her but i changed it in b flat major because it's a very practical reason uh, in regards to the tr transposed instruments i mean a trumpet uh, is a transposed instrument. It's in B flat. So, it, so um, if if a, a trumpet plays, um, for instance, in lay, in A major concert, um, then it means he has to play in B major, and that's with five sharps. So, uh, when when your band, if you're not sure about the, the the level of your band, it's better to to check 
um, uh, tonalities where, where there are not too much sharps and flats. It will, um, it, will, uh, it will be better, it will sound better also. The orchestra will sound better. Uh, of course, besides the, the tonalities, you, you can start modulating um, depending on what you want to do with, uh, with, with, with arrangement, but uh, a modulation is, uh, often gives you, gives the piece a lift, you know. Uh, it's a typical when, when, an, uh, when an arrangement goes uh, half step up, it gives you uh, really like a lift that it sounds even more open uh, and, and more to, towards, towards an end of the piece. So, uh, any questions? And uh, uh, we have two questions. Um, okay, Nico Kanaka, Kanakaris uh, was Ducantin one of the first to organize a big band in such a sophisticated, sophisticated way? Um, well, there were, I mean, you have uh, Fletcher Henderson, you have the very first smaller bands. Um, they used like, like uh, seven, eight, nine people. And uh, they were there to, to play in ballrooms and in, 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 in clubs to, to, yeah, to make sure for the atmosphere people to dance on. Um, and they uh, used more like this uh, call and response uh, uh, procedure to, to have this energy coming from stage from a complete band. So, so Duke, Duke Ellington was one of the first uh, in the Cotton Club, uh, for instance, who was... Um, uh, yeah, one of the founding fathers of, of, the, of the, 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 the bigger jazz orchestras. Another question I see, I wonder uh, of you also use an acoustic rhythm guitarist like bass, it seems like lost art form. It depends, yeah, sometimes we do, we do use a, a guitar player who is really like Freddie Green, Freddie Green kind of uh, um, guitaristic comping, like really, on the on the on every beat is this bleep 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 not using the complete chord even just two notes of the chord just have this this forward motion and swing give it the forward motion and swing to it so it's um that's really uh important now the guitar is much more uh yeah evolved into uh yeah creating an extra sound to it uh, well, I have to write in this arrangement also for a, for a guitarist. So, so sometimes I ask him to play really like chords and have, have like open chords, like a, a, an extra color to it. Sometimes he plays um, melodies together with, with, for instance, the tenor saxophones or the trombones. It's nice that this really thick guitar, jazz guitar, has this, this blending sound with trombones or, or tenor saxes. Um, and that gives it uh, an extra an extra drive into it. Um, and of course, uh, with all the effects of today, the guitar guitars can do a lot of, of extra sounds to add to to the to the contemporary um, music, uh, the content, contemporary uh, jazz music. So, but of course, um, uh, in the beginning, bassy guitar was a really as a comping. Um, swinging, uh, driving uh, instrument. So uh, that's it. Okay. So when you really start writing, you need a plan. Um, and the best and most practical way uh, is to create a timeline first. Uh, it is a good. It, it is good to have a general plan. And this plan is not sacred. I mean, it can be modified in the proce process. It gives you something to hold on to. It keeps you focused concerning your ideas, your, your first ideas, your original ideas. You can see the overall structure of the arrangement and hold on to that. You can hold on to that until the moment that you decide to change something. I mean, it's, it's like I said, it's not a sacred thing. And I would like to share with you now um, a timeline that I uh, prepared for you. Um, I hope it's going to work. Um, does it all right? So, so now you see this um, timeline, and it's um, it's it's a timeline that you create in in a certain in, in amount of levels. I mean, uh, this timeline I worked already a, a little bit. 
uh, on the arrangement, so I know now what to, to do with that, but I will try to go with you step by step. First of all, um, you, you can indicate in that plan how many courses you have to take into account. So we know that we have, we have four verses uh, because the, 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 the song has four verses. So that's one thing to, to, to start working on. I mean, it's four times ABA, four times 32 bars. Um, but there is also, uh, in my arrangement, I would like to, to add a tutti, you know, like an orchestral tutti, uh, a moment where, where the complete orchestra as one voice is playing uh, melodies and, 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 and uh, put some energy in it. And I need probably uh, uh, an ABA for more. And also there is this, this solo part for, for the, the extra soloist from uh, in the orchestra. And uh, so I had another one. So if you can see that um, when we start, you can see my cursor, you see letter A, and that's where the first, uh, that, no, that is the, the intro, I go to B, that's the first verse. So that means eight bars, eight bars, and we go on with the next eight, and then the last eight here. Um, the thing that I wanted to, to try to, to develop is also that I, I didn't want to stay with the original harmonies, but I also didn't want to stay with your or, uh, original uh, meter. So the last A, I changed it instead of 4-4, four, four, because this is here like 4-4, four, four, I start to, uh, uh, I arrange it into a 4-4-3-4. Four, four, four. So it's together 4-4-3-4-7-4, four, 4-4-3-4, four, 4-4-3-4, four, 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 four. and then the last is again 4-4. Four, four. I added an extra bar here because I like the open uh, ending of, of uh, the first uh, verse. And I do that every time at the end of every uh, verse, I add an extra bar. So to go into the second verse and uh, same thing, same thing. I always keep this uh, last A here, letter I, uh, again with this three, three, four, 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 three, four, 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 and the extra bar. You can see that also here, um, uh, where I am, I'm going further, you see here, uh, letter uh, EE, -E, that's the bridge of verse three. So that's the, the third uh, verse going into the fourth verse here. So we have four, four, four verses and then uh, I added some uh, space for soloist for instance, um, sorry for my here, K, letter K. Um, it starts with an instrumental duty just to launch, really to launch the soloist at letter L. So the soloist is not starting really on the first bar of the verse, but, but on the ninth bars of the verse. Going into the solo, uh, going back, that rehearsal sign here, a repeat sign goes back to K, so that's, that's um, a thing that I add first on paper. I did it now on computer, but I have to say, normally I do it just uh, by hand with, with a pencil. It, it works really well when you, when you have a pencil and just start to, to yeah, uh, create things and, and, and yeah, exper ex to have some, some uh, experiment about that. Um, I added also, as you can see, I added also the keys already. I mean, I told you in the beginning that I, uh, the key uh, to sing in for the, for the vocalist is the key of uh, B flat ma major. But I wanted to have this one, the, when, the, when the, the vocalist starts here, starts, I won't have already that lift when she starts singing. So I started A flat, so two steps down. Uh, as in the intro and to go to this at the end of this intro here I lay I, I lay down and going modulation there's a modulation here into that B flat major so it, it, it goes in this at the same time it, it uh, has this um, uh, relief but at the same time a lift so um, and that's a nice effect I think um, and it goes on in B flat all the time. And then 
at a, at a certain point, we are, after the second verse, we have this interlude, and that's something I use to pre prepare the first soloist that's coming on uh, in front of stage, in fact. And uh, in this interlude, I prepare uh, the, 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 new, the, the new tonality. The modulation is going on here into the key of F. So it's completely different, different key for the saxophone player, in this case, an alto saxophone player, uh, namely uh, FV initials, who will have this, um, uh, play this uh, solo in F major. And it goes on all the time in F major. At the end of the solo, because the solo ends here, um, the tutti starts and we go to another key again, D flat. Just having this, 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 uh, you know, it's it's nice to 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 well, let's say fool a little bit with the ears of of, of the audience. You know, they, they, it's nice to have this new sound starting with it in a different key. Um, yeah, so so this 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 whole timeline gives you already a quite good idea about about uh, how to go on with the ideas that you ha have and how how to start and have some uh, development in the ar arrangement going uh, to the end of the uh, arrangement. Uh, I, I, I talked already also about the soloist starting here, but I want not just have the soloist playing a solo accompanied by, by the, the, the rhythm section. At a certain moment, backings are coming in. I mean with backings, it's, it's like, saxophones from in the orchestra or the trumpets or the trombones or everybody is coming in to 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 back up the soloist so it gives also there at that point it gives also a lift to that moment where the soloist is playing his, his, his thing is doing his thing but supported by the orchestra uh, and really in his back pushing his uh, his thing forward you know so um and, and, and it goes on at the end. I, I try to have this, this ending where, um, where the soloist is, is yeah, can freak out a little bit and going into the very end of the solo, going into the tutti that starts over here, not just the tutti of the orchestra, but also uh, as an extra color to the lines, uh, the vocalist who is vocalizing really, but without words, the, the main, the lead lines of the tutti. All right, so, um, uh, so with this plan, you can also sketch a first general tension bow. I mean, it's, it's really important that you, that you have this, this uh, knowledge about uh, the, 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 the tension and the relief. I mean, always when, when you have an arrangement, when it's always too much tension, at the end, it's not tension anymore, it's just, it's just too much, uh, and and in the other direction the same. When it's too too much, of, of, yeah. How do you say that? Uh, too easy going. Then at the same time, it starts to be boring. Maybe uh, it depends, of course, of, of the of the quality of the arrangement. But but I try to to make sure that that there is like this tension and relief. That's why I put these signs like the crescendo and diminuendo signs. It's not just about ton, uh, about uh, uh, volume, but it's also about tension. So here the, 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 the intro starts and there is this tension going up because there is a fill of the drums going into a with the rhythm section, complete rhythm section. And it goes on, the, the bones are coming in. And from the moment that the bones are coming in, the tension grows and grows and grows. And here is the top and then the relief into the first verse. Um, and that's several times when you have, it's, it's really great if you have this, this, um, this, this side, uh, I mean, this line where you have this uh, tension and relief, you will see that a lot of arrangements, a lot of compositions is about tension and uh, relief. Um, so that's a very nice thing to do. I'm gonna, stop sharing this now uh, let's see if there are some questions uh, being asked asked um, okay is there a danger in trying to transpose more complex themes from a smaller band to a big band i found that sometimes bigger 
is not better, so are their limitations to what a big band can do. I mean, I, if I understand correctly, and it's it's when you transpose, you have to keep in mind that, of course, trumpets and 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 all the instruments they have like limits, and uh, if you transpose a melody in a certain key and it appears to be way too high for the trumpets it's gonna it's gonna be a really a problem to to play it well and to to, to have a, a nice blend in the orchestra same for every instrument in fact i mean every instrument has is is best range to 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 play with to the best colors are in a certain range of the instrument and and uh, there are a lot of books or these times pdf files on the internet where you can find all this information about the best ranges of uh, instruments to work with and um, so you have to keep in mind that not only the, uh, the tonality is about the singer it's also about the instruments that are um, that are uh, yeah they have their limits so you have to think about the high and the lows especially when you start writing a melody for let's say a tenor saxophone and it's way too low it will or it's it doesn't work or it's way too dark or it's way too it's out of tune maybe you know so you have to think about that but then you need the knowledge of every instrument you need to know what's the best range to write in for uh, 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 an instrument of course, when you have the, the, the luxury to, 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 play, to write for a good band, you, there are more possibilities. But if you, if you want to write something for, for any band, just uh, make sure that they have good time playing it and not have this fight all the time about too high, too low and so forth. And too, ma too much uh, sharps, too much flats, you know. It's, uh, it's something, I mean, it's, it's the pleasure of playing that makes it sound too. So there's another question. Uh, is your theme in the sounding tonalities uh, or did you transpose them already? Uh, no, my, my, uh, the first goal was to make sure that the tonality was uh, all right for the singer. And um, uh, the only thing I stayed all the time with that tonality, even when I changed tonalities during the, the, the arrangement for, the, for the, the tutis, for instance, or for the solo, but at the end, um, I changed the, the tonality again for the um, for the singer. Um, uh, let's see. Yeah, I because uh, at letter C C uh, we come in the two two with a groove in D flat, and then I modulate to D, and that's again this lift that I wanted to have. It's 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 more. I mean, it's a louder moment, a louder mo more volume anyway in the in the the moment of the arrangement because a lot of instruments are playing also there and so the singer can sing a little bit louder anyway so there is probably more uh, uh possibilities to sing a little bit higher also so that's that's um something that because i need some more energy there than another kind of energy than the energy of the beginning of the arrangement when it was in d flat so uh, that's something I would like to do. Um, this, this is the key of D, uh, but I'm, I stopped sharing, I realize now. So anyway, it, it starts in the key of D, so it's a lot of higher, a lot higher. But then from that point, I start to uh, diminish the, the energy. So it means the fourth verse, I just lowered down, lowered down the key again and ha by a half step. So it's it's a it's a way of, of dealing with with um, with tension and energy and volume and and impact uh, of of that uh, of the melody itself. So um, I hope I could answer all your questions um, satisfac satisfactory, something like this. I hope you're satisfied. Um, all right, so. To conclude, to conclude this first streaming session, I would like to uh, mention a few general uh, thoughts. Um, first of all, when you start uh, arranging a piece, start by improvising on the chords of the piece, including the re-harmonized ones, if you did. So to get to know and to hear the harmony well. 
uh, it will immerse yourself in, in into that piece. I mean, it gets more, you're you're more um, more uh, you have more um, connection with the piece uh, if you know the piece better. Um, also, give yourself enough time for ideas to grow. Don't start too easy, too too fast. I mean, an idea is good. Write it down and just the best thing is to write it down immediately. Don't wait to write it down because it's not sure that the, they will stay in your head. So, but give it enough time to let it grow. Um, make a note of every idea immediately. That's what I said. Uh, each time you start working on the arrangement, turn on the metronome at a specified tempo so that the rhythmic figures uh, are in the correct proportion. Uh, I mean, uh, an, an arrangement, you don't write a kind of arrangement like this one in, in one day. So, so, so whenever you, you start, you, you have a tempo in mind. It's like, for instance, this time is 144 uh, beats per minute. So the next day, when I start working on ideas, I first put the metronome on, on 144, to get again the, the, the right tempo in my mind, in my feeling, so I know that, that the rhythmic figures that I try to develop are in the same uh, proportion as the day before, because then it could be, a, could be a surprise if you start writing and every day has another feel and another tempo, the figures won't work really well when you bring them together. Um, then way to write, when you start working on an, on an arrangement, way to, uh, to write an intro and the outro. Start doing that after you have enough compositional material in, 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 when you're in the arrangement itself. So don't start with, with, uh, with the intro or with the outro. Just wait for, for when you start writing enough, when you have enough material, then you will, you will have so much ideas to, to start writing the intro or the outro. I mean the outro, I mean the coda. Uh, um, so um, that's it for now, I think. And just checking now once for a question, are there certain keys that will always work for all instrument groups? The, I mean, uh, when you have transposed instruments, when you have to write for trumpets, um, like I say, it's the best uh, keys are the ones with, with too, not too much uh, sharps and, and flats. So I I would I won't go further than than three or three far three uh, sharps or three flats. It depends. It depends. Um, for for uh, saxophones, uh, an alto saxophone is is an E flat. So it means yeah, when you write a piece, a concert C, it's, it's uh, it means three sharps for the for the alto. It means two sharps for the tenor saxophone. So. I think that works the best. Uh, also in jazz, a lot of the players, they are used to playing in, in concert B or B flat or in concert E flat or F or um, E flat. So that's, that's a good thing uh, to keep in mind. Uh, they are used to that, to those, uh, to these um, tonalities. So, right. Um, Right, so next time we're going into the development of, uh, of the harmony because yeah, this piece has, has maybe six different chords uh, and I, I have this idea of, of, of trying to develop more harmony into it. So reharmonizing uh, the harmony um, and uh, I, I wanna develop the melodies. I mean, you have the, 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 the hat melody, the, the, the melody that everybody knows, but I want to develop that. I want to develop the rhythmic figures and we'll start uh, analyzing the musical score. Um, and that's about the form, but also about the arranging techniques. I mean, sometimes I use all kinds of voicings. Um, sometimes I use combinations in between the sections with unisons uh, versus voiced out lines and so on. There's a lot, of, a lot to talk about. So um, yeah, that's uh, that's it for now. Um, I hope you enjoyed uh, this live stream. Um, if you do, please like it and share this uh, video. And I invite you to subscribe to the BGO YouTube channel to stay informed uh, on new uh, live stream events. 
and other videos. And the next episode of uh, From Paper to Stage will be announced on our social media and uh, website. So thank you very much. Stay tuned. Take care and good night. <laughs>